Some people call it a star on Earth. This is the USSR Tsar Bomba, the most powerful hydrogen bomb ever detonated. Hydrogen bombs have been around since the early 1950s. They rely on nuclear fusion and are generally more powerful than atomic bombs, which rely on nuclear fission. Fission breaks up atoms and in that process releases energy, while fusion combines smaller atoms into bigger ones. A hydrogen bomb combines hydrogen atoms to form helium atoms, and in this process, a tremendous amount of energy is released. Our sun, a star, also produces energy through nuclear fusion, as it combines hydrogen atoms to form helium atoms. But if our sun is a giant hydrogen bomb, as it's sometimes called, then why doesn't it blow apart like a hydrogen bomb? Something ain't right. For starters, there are many ways we can initiate fusion. Some are faster than others. So let's start here to see how the fusion process in a hydrogen bomb is different from the fusion process in the sun. First of all, fusion requires really high temperatures and pressures, at least until we have a plausible theoretical model for cold fusion. In any case, in a hydrogen bomb, this temperature and pressure is provided by detonating a small atomic bomb which relies on fission inside the hydrogen bomb. For the sun, there is no fission to provide these high temperatures and pressures. Instead, we rely on a simpler process. Gravity. That's right. Gravity might be the weakest of the fundamental forces of nature, but it's active over orders of magnitude greater distance than all of the other forces. Now I know that gravity is not considered to be a force in certain scientific models, but for simplicity, it's an effective force in this discussion. Gravity comes from mass, and since gravity is weak compared to other forces, we need a lot of mass to have a strong gravitational force. And if we need a force strong enough to squeeze hydrogen into a high temperature and pressure environment for fusion, we're going to need a very, very large amount of hydrogen gas, much bigger than the sun. Once we have that, we just need to back away and let gravity do what it's good at, attracting everything in sight. As the hydrogen cloud shrinks because of its own gravity, the temperature at the center or core will have the highest temperature and pressure. At some point during this shrinking, the temperature in the core is high enough that fusion might happen. I say might because the temperature is not really hot enough for proper nuclear fusion. But there is a chance that two hydrogen atoms will combine to form a stable helium atom. A very small chance. However, with the mass of 2 times 10 to the 30th kilogram, this small chance is applied to all of the hydrogen atoms in the core where the temperature is high enough. And when we consider that the gas cloud is bigger than the sun, there's a lot of chances per unit time. So now we know how we get the initial high temperature and pressure in the sun. But high temperature and pressure is not all we need to make nuclear fusion happen. We also need neutrons. Neutrons makes it easier for fusion to happen. Normal hydrogen does not contain any neutrons, so we'll need to find a way to get those neutrons. Let's now get back to the hydrogen bomb and see how the actual nuclear fusion happens, then we'll compare that with the nuclear fusion process in the sun. At this point, the internal atomic bomb has already created the high temperature and pressure needed for fusion. Our fuel source is not pure hydrogen, but instead it's lithium hydride, or LIH. But the hydrogen in this compound is not of the normal hydrogen. Instead, it's an isotope of hydrogen that contains a neutron, so it's called deuterium instead of hydrogen. And because of this, the compound is called lithium deuteride 
instead of lithium hydride. Something to also keep in mind is that the initial explosion from the internal atomic bomb has created lots of neutrons. So now, the stage is set. The initial neutrons interact with the lithium to cause a breakup of the lithium into tritium an isotope of hydrogen with two neutrons and helium the tritium produced will then fuse with the already available deuterium and in that process release a large amount of energy in the form of high energy neutrons These neutrons will then go on to break more lithium atoms into tritium and helium, with the tritium fusing with deuterium and continuing the chain reaction of producing energy. Since all of the hydrogen is in a neutron-rich high temperature and pressure environment, once the reaction starts, all of the fuel will be used up almost in an instant. Now, when it comes to the sun, it's simpler, but more complicated. Let me explain. When two normal hydrogen nuclei, which I'll just call protons because that's what they are, collide, there's almost no chance that they will fuse to form helium. However, there's a very, very, very small chance, one in 10 to the 1026, that during the collision, one of the protons will be converted into a neutron. Now we have deuterium that's much more easier to fuse into helium than two protons. At this point, the reaction rate would proceed in a similar way like the hydrogen bomb, but it's limited not by the amount of normal hydrogen available, but by the very limited amount of deuterium that is created from the very rare proton to neutron conversion when two protons collide. So unlike a hydrogen bomb, most of the fuel in the sun is not yet available to be converted into energy. So therefore, it can't explode like a bomb. Also, let's not forget that only near the center or core of the sun is the temperature and pressure high enough to support fusion. But there's still more to this because without the effect of quantum tunneling, which is yet another rare event, the temperature at the core of the sun would not be high enough for nuclear fusion. So now it all makes sense. Nuclear fusion happens in a hydrogen bomb and in the sun, but the reason that the sun doesn't explode like a bomb is because, given its size, only a very, very, very small amount of fuel is actually available to explode at any given time. Check out the links in the description if you want to dive deeper into nuclear fusion. Subscribe for more demystification of the strange and weird. I'm DexDFX.